What's the latest at Engine Yard? I spoke with John Dillon. He's the CEO of Engine Yard. I'm Bambi Francisco. So recently, Engine Yard uh, moved a bit away from its roots, moving into um, PHP or adding PHP to its services. Why did you do that? Well, we, we're still very, very focused on Ruby on Rails. We're making a lot of investment there. Uh, most of our current customers are based on Ruby on Rails. It's a great development environment. But there's a big community of PHP developers that need a great service. And we saw a need, and we figured if we didn't do it, somebody else would. And we found a great a little company in Dublin, Ireland called Orchestra mm -hmm. with some really talented founders and key principals in it. And we were able to bring the two companies together. So what we're going to be doing now is offering the same great service we offer to Ruby development teams. We're going to ultimately be offering that to PHP teams. How much did you teams. pay for Orchestra? Well, I wouldn't be able to tell you that, but okay. it's a combination of cash and equity. Okay. Uh, we want the incoming uh, employees to share in the upside in the company, but we also wanted them to have a little bit of cash. And uh, we think it's a, uh, you know, just a perfect small acquisition. In, in acquisition terms, you can get these really big ones that are really messy and ugly. Or you can find a small team of really committed folks uh, where the price is right, the economics work, and you put them together and one plus one can be uh, three or four. And I think right. that's what we did here. Are you moving to, let's say, Python as well? I have heard that's pretty popular. Python is uh, an agile development language uh, as well. It's considered a dynamic language like PHP and like Ruby. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen much demand for that yet. Um, if the demand develops and materializes, that might be something we support. One of the things that we believe is that developers will pick a development platform as a service, a vendor like Engine Yard, when the service is competent, where we harden uh, the environment, uh, we make it scalable, we make it reliable, and the development team can rely on us to keep that current, to keep it updated, and uh, give them a great environment for developing. And if you're not very good, say with Ruby on Rails or very good with PHP, the developers can do it themselves or they'll go someplace else. So the value has to be there. So before we expand too far, we want to make sure that we're very, very good with Ruby on Rails, and we think we are, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that we're very, very good with PHP. Well, before we expand too much, uh too much into this uh, to this interview. We probably should talk. We should probably tell the audience exactly what Engine Yard does. Maybe explain a little bit where you fit. So you've got companies. Vader is a client. So you've got Vader. You've got cloud services like Amazon Web Services. You have Ruby on Rails developers. Where does Engine Yard fit? So there's this big thing happening in the tech industry. It's called the cloud. We call it the cloud because on the whiteboard we used to draw a big cloud whenever we right. talked about the internet. And what we're doing is we're taking whole computer data centers with thousands of computers and we're making those available through the cloud to anybody who needs compute resource. And what Engine Yard does is we sit on top of that cloud infrastructure and we create a development environment so developers can easily and quickly build applications that then run on the cloud. And what we do is we hand select the components, and there's lots of different pieces in a, in, a, in a development environment. There's a database, there's a web server, an application server, there's a programming language, there's load balancers, all these things, and they all have software in different pieces. We bring all those together, we integrate them, we harden them, and then we automate them, surround them with other services and instrumentation, and that's what we deliver as a service to the development teams. And that sits on top of Amazon Web it Services? It sits on top of Terramark. Amazon Web Services, where it sits on Verizon uh, Terramark uh, mm -hmm. cloud services. And over time, it'll probably sit on other environments as new clouds come to market. And your customer size, I mean, you've got Vader, we're considered a small customer. Are they, I think on your site, it said you have a lot of bloggers and maybe small, smallish sites. Is it, are you more small to mid-sized businesses? We have um, customers that are the whole range. We have Fortune 500 companies. We have Fortune 50 companies. Where's uh, the concentration of, of uh, Well, really, honestly, it's spread uh, all over the map. And what customers usually do is come to us when they're going to start a new project. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't about ripping out big IT I and mean, going into the data center and tearing out stuff that's already there. This is about innovation, starting a new project, usually to engage with your employees or customers, business to business, business to consumer, um, regulators. 
and to build an application that can engage whoever your user constituency is. And a lot of times the business sponsor has a time to value or an ROI where they need something done quickly, effectively, and cost effective. And that's what the cloud and that's what a development platform as a service gives to the development team who ultimately is trying to satisfy that demand. What is your average customer paying you on a monthly basis? The average customer might spend $500 to $1,000 a month, but we have customers who can spend $100,000 a month, and we have customers who uh, spend $25 a month. Um, almost all projects start out small, and then they scale with success. Some projects just fail. Um, mm -hmm. Some projects are wildly successful. So in terms of your growth, you're looking to move into PHP and service the same group of customers, sort of the smaller to mid-sized customers, or would you think of yourself as you know, moving up the stack, I guess, and, and servicing the larger customers with, with more than what you currently well, have? Well, as I pointed out, we have large customers yeah. that are doing small projects. Got it. And so it's really more project scope that determines the success and the appropriateness for uh, a service like Engine Yard. Um, PHP just expands the market because for every individual that's developing an application in Ruby on Rails, there might be two or three that are developing an application in PHP. PHP has much larger adoption than Ruby does at this point. Mm -hmm. Ruby is growing faster, but it's one of the large sort of industry standard languages. Okay, John, we're going to wrap it up there. I feel like we're having a very technical conversation, but we're going to, the next interview, we're going to talk a little bit about your revenues and what's going to be driving the growth of your, what's going to be uh, driving the revenues in your company this year and next year. That'd this be great. Program. Thank you very much. I've been speaking to John Dillon. He's the CEO and founder of Engine Yard. I'm Bambi Francisco.